What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash I don't work your lady. This story's called, The Day I Gave My Four Weeks Notice. <laughs> oh no, my butt fell off. I do not even know how to begin this story, so I guess with a little bit of background info. I had been working at a supermarket for a couple of years to earn some money while studying, but the managers were horrible. Especially this one guy. He's a bit younger than me, but since he's a kiss ass, he got promoted to a higher function. He is the reason I left the job. So now on to the actual story. I came to the store on a Wednesday morning to hand in my four weeks notice. But when I got there, my colleague was working the checkouts and the customer service by herself. The manager was handling the safe, so she couldn't come and help. And we had to wait for another colleague to finish unloading the truck. So me being a great colleague helped the only customer at the customer customer service to make sure she didn't have to wait for at least 10 minutes to get a pack of cigarettes. And just when I closed the customer service, Karen came around the corner. The customer service does have a little checkout for people with baskets, which Karen had. However, it was closed, and since I was off the clock and I had an appointment later that morning, I was not going to open that checkout for her. Mind you, I had been chatting with the other customer for a while, and around 8-10 to 10 minutes had gone by at that point. And since I was in my raincoat, which is not even close to the work attire, I thought she would understand the circumstances given the huge line at the other checkout. Okay, on to the actual conversation. There's me, Karen, nice lady, manager. Karen puts the clothes sign on the magazine rack, opens up the exit, and puts her stuff on the counter, aka opens the checkout for herself. Oh, I'm sorry, miss. This register is closed since I'm off the clock. My colleague asked me to help this lady real quick since no one else could at the time. But there should be somewhere here in two minutes, Max, to help you out. How dare you? I'm a loyal customer and you cannot treat me like this. I am a widow and have to do everything by myself. You are gonna help me right now and I will not take no for an answer. I have always worked for my boss without getting paid. Miss, if I may ask, what is the problem here? She won't help me. This nice girl just helped me get some cigarettes since your colleague asked her to help me out, so I didn't have to wait for 15 minutes. That's right. Uh, the checkout was closed since I'm off the clock and only here to give you my four weeks notice. She knew about this. It was not a surprise. Ah, <laughs> my butt. Well, Miss, so sorry we couldn't help you, but I'm here now, so I can help you. You need to get your workers under control. That little Ben shouldn't have treated me like this. I am a loyal customer. Miss, she is off the clock and the manager is checking you out right now. Can't you be a bit nicer to this young lady? Do not mess with me, you dumb bench, and do not get involved. I'll make your life miserable. Miss, please stop insulting my coworker and the lady right here. They did nothing wrong. If you say one more bad thing, I will not help you any further and you can leave without your groceries. The customer left without saying anything else and the manager, nice lady, and I had a great laugh afterwards. Another fun fact. This woman has been a Karen for at least 15 years. My parents have a hedge problem in their back garden, which was always maintained by my granddad. Apparently, Karen lives in the same neighborhood and stopped by to ask my mom about the electric hedge trimmer and if my mom could trim her hedge. When my mom told her it was being maintained by her father-in-law, she called her a lying bench and also told the story of her deceased husband and how she can't do it herself. However, she had a daughter who was perfectly able to trim her hedge at the time. Her daughter did have a stroke recently and is partially paralyzed, but there wasn't anything wrong with her before this. I know this because she was a loyal customer as well and was the nicest and most active customer I had. I ran into her last week. She gave me the dirtiest look I've ever gotten. It was hilarious. Eh, for everyone commenting on my spelling of cigarette, I confused it with the Dutch spelling, it. And since it is 10 p.m. over here and I've had a really long day, I am not going to edit it. Just deal with it. <laughs> First off, I tried to pronounce it in Dutch, but ugh. Second, um, I'm sorry, but this story obviously belongs in r slash I do work here, lady, but not in four weeks, but I'm also off the clock, so I'm not currently working here, but I will in a little bit, but not for long. It just really irks me when people don't get the subreddits right, you know what I mean? Also, I'm joking, guys, it's just a joke. <laughs> I know someone's gonna get mad. This story's called, I Got Mistaken for a Walmart Employee at Self-Checkout. Here's the cast. Crazy lady. Actual employee. Me. I apparently chose the wrong day to go to Walmart after work. Before I start, let me explain why there was no way this should have happened. 
I work in a kitchen. I was wearing black jeans with holes, a gray shirt with the name and logo of my work on it, steel toe boots, a hat with a monster logo on it, and my ponytail sticking out, and my black sweater. My shirt and my pants were also dirty and had some food spills on them from, you know, working in a kitchen all day. I got off work around 9 and decided I didn't want to cook when I got home, nor did I want to order food for my work. I eat there quite often, so I wasn't in the mood for it. So I made the grave mistake of going to Walmart. I went and picked out something that I could just throw in the oven when I got home so I could clean up while it cooked. It was 9.30, a 20 minute drive from Walmart to my job by the time I got to self checkout. I scanned my food and put it in the bag, but as I was doing so, someone stood in line behind me. No big deal, they're just waiting for their turn. Nope, apparently this lady thought that I was an employee. As I began to walk away, she began to shout at me. My memory of the interaction may not be perfect, I was tired and very hungry. Hey, where are you going? Huh? Aren't you gonna scan my stuff? Why would I do that? At this point, I'm super confused and haven't quite figured out what was happening. Because it's your job! No, it's not. I don't work here. I thought, more hoped, that that was the end of it. So I turned to walk away. Liar! I want to scan that! She then pointed to the bag holding my food. Lady, this is self-checkout. You scan and bag your own stuff. No, I don't work here. I won't do your job for you. Stop being a lazy bench and do your damn job. Me, visibly upset now. Look, lady, I don't work here. I did, however, just get off my actual job. I want to go home and eat, okay? Leave me the hell alone. I again turned to walk away, but this lady wasn't having it. She shoved her cart forward at me, which did hit me, but didn't hurt me. At this point, my temper did get the better of me, and I shoved it right back at her. I'm female and 17 and in high school, so I tend to lose my temper quite easily. The cart didn't hit her, but it hit the machine and made a super loud noise. This is when actual employee makes his glorious appearance into our story. As he approached, she was screaming something at me. I have no clue what. Excuse me, ladies. What is going on here? Your lazy employee is refusing to do her job. Actual employee just kind of looked at me, then looked at her. Actual employee was wearing a blue shirt and a yellow vest. I clearly was not. Actual employee also knows me because I am in there more than I'd like to admit sometimes. Uh, she doesn't work here, ma'am. What does he need help with? She does too. I watched her scan that. She once again pointed at my food. This is a self-checkout, ma'am. That's what you do here. What is it you are needing help with? I just need my damn stuff scanned. Actual employee now realizing what the lady wanted. Ma'am, this is a self-checkout. You have to do it yourself. At this point, I felt I was no longer needed. So I tried for the third time to turn and leave. I did hear her shout something at me, but I didn't care to listen to what she said. I don't know what happened after I left, obviously, but good God, some people. It was a fairly short interaction, but still an annoying one. Edit. I do point out that I am 17, but I don't look 17. I get mistaken for early 20s a lot. I more included that as to say how quick I am to anger. I'm a 17-year-old female that is hormonal because puberty, and I do have quite a bit of muscle, so it doesn't take much for me to cause harm. That's why I didn't push the cart directly at her. Ah, I too am very strong. Oh yeah, I'm flexing right now. Eh, cute little story and very believable. She didn't add any superfluous details that might cause one to question its authenticity, but who cares? It, you know, good content. This story is called, I don't work here, my mother does. Sorry for committing this sin of mobile. So to start off, a bit of backstory. My mother works as the ice cream maker for a little three shop ice cream chain. And although I don't work there, I sometimes hang out in the back with my mom and the owner is cool with it since she's a nice person. The shop also sells shirts with the logo on them, but those are just shirts and employees wear polos. Meet the cast. Me, my mother, Karen, as well as some bystanders. The ice cream 
shop had a bit of a slow day, and my mom called to say that I should come on over and chat with her and the owners. I agreed because, I mean, free ice cream. Well, as I got there, so did a bunch of other people, about 10 of them. I had gotten there a little quicker than most, so I ordered my ice cream first and managed to sit down with it. As I am enjoying my peanut butter Oreo ice cream, I hear a soft, ahem, from behind me. Since it's pretty busy, I assume that someone is getting the attention of a wait staff member, so I continue eating. A few seconds later, a second, louder, ahem, this one is just behind me. I still don't think anything of it since it's a crowded shop. Well, I guess not turning around was the wrong decision. Excuse me, comes a voice from behind me, a Karen with so much Karen energy that she caused other Karens to become weaker. Shouldn't you be walking? I mean, it's quite busy here. This set Karen off even further. She grabs my shoulder and spins me, my chair, and my precious ice cream around to face her. Young man, you will take my order or I will get you fired. I know the owner here. I guess that I looked like I was going to talk back to her or something since she raised her voice further. I can see the shirt you're wearing and I know you have to serve me. I was wearing one of the aforementioned shirts sold by the store and she had obviously assumed that I worked there. This had happened before, just not to me, but I had heard stories that just ended in someone saying, oh, I don't work here, so I tried that. Hey, um, sorry for the mistake, but I am gonna get fired if I don't get my ice cream right now, interrupts Karen. Just then, who should emerge from the back but my mother? She doesn't do anything at first, just trying to see what is going on. Karen started to yell again. I've seen you in the back of the shop. I know that you work here. If you don't give me my ice cream, you will never work at ice cream chain again. At this, my mother makes her move. Now, my mother is is not a very intimidating person. She's about average height and a bit large, but she can be loud enough to rival even this Titan Karen. But she starts with the, can I help you, ma'am? Karen decides this is when she will get me fired. This little dad has been slacking off on the job. If I hadn't caught him, he would have stayed on his phone, not even help customers. I want him fired now. My mom brings herself up to her full height and faces is me. She takes a deep breath, turns to Karen, and says, Get out. Karen had been standing behind her with a smug look over her makeup, but now she looks confused. Excuse me? You have just caused a serious commotion at the store. You have insulted and wasted the time of this young man who just so happens to not only not work here, but he is also my son. If you don't get out, I will call the police or remove you myself. Karen deflates, but while she walks to the door, I catch her shooting me the stink eye. Never saw her again, but my mom and I laugh about it now. Hello, this is Diva Zack, and I am here to say this and only this. This story was so cute. <laughs> Magnifique. Is this McDonald's? No, this is someone with the last name MacDonald. Well, this happened when I was a kid, but it did happen so many times that I can clearly remember some instances. Also, my mom, the one attending the phone, always tells this as some of her most funny experiences. Uh, some background. I'm from Peru, a Spanish-speaking country with mostly Hispanic people. This was about 2004-2005. So, McDonald's had recently opened a new location in my district. Back then, only a few were open in the city. After all, Peru was, and still is, a developing country. So, turns out that McDonald's didn't have a delivery service back then. However, that didn't stop people from searching it on the phone book. As I said, my country is mostly a Hispanic country with a very small German colony. So, it is incredibly rare to find someone with a non-Hispanic last name. In this case, McDonald. So, it figures they just found our name in numbers on the phone book and call us. So at first it was the usual, Hi, is this McDonald's? And we'd answer something along the lines of, Sorry, this is a home phone. Our family name is McDonald. But for some reason, we had so many calls that we got to the point where my mom would just pretend to take the order and then hung up. Whenever they called back to check on their order, she would just hang up. This kept on going on for about two years until we moved and my dad got the new house phone number registered as a private number. I know it's not that juicy, but when I was six years old, I always sat next to my mom as she responded to the calls and we both cracked laughing afterwards. 
a nice childhood memory. You know what, it's always interesting to hear about someone else's childhood memories. Because a lot of the time, the stuff you hear from people is, you know, Oh, one time when I was a kid, this absolutely terrible, horrible thing happened to me. <laughs> and, um, you know, that's always interesting. But what you don't hear quite as much is, you know, people, other people's nostalgia. Obviously, you're not going to get the same nostalgic effect that the person telling the story is getting. But it serves as a reminder that everyone has a consciousness. We as humans are so self-absorbed that we don't really realize that. Obviously, there are special cases, but pretty much everyone in the world has lived a life that is completely different from yours. Completely different experiences, you know, traumas and nostalgia and all that crap. It's just absolutely bonkers to think about that. You know, you could be on uh, the subway and there's like 800 people on there. Every single one of those people has had a life that led up to them being there with you and they're gonna and their life is gonna take them somewhere else and you'll probably never see them again it's just bonkers don't forget to like subscribe and hit that bell to never miss an episode